Now I don't say this very often, but this is the plugin a majority of people are gonna wanna check out. So hopefully that intro wasn't too dramatic, but honestly, this is truly a plugin I think a lot of people are gonna wanna check out. Native Instruments just last week dropped a new plugin called Session Percussionist. Now, if you're familiar with any of the other Session Instruments, it is somewhat similar, but it is to me dramatically different. This is actually a sole reason I canceled my Splice subscription, so be sure to check out why for that. Now, as usual, I'm gonna give you a brief walkthrough and I'm gonna show you an actual example of me using the plugin. So before we jump into that, let's go see what Native Instruments has to say about this new plugin. So described as an intelligent drum and percussion library, which I can absolutely attest to, you will see in the walkthrough that it just does things that especially me not being a percussionist in any way, just truly, truly appreciates. And you're really gonna see that. As of the day of this video, you can pick it up for $99. I will tell you personally, it is worth more than that. If you wanna check it out for yourself, I'll leave a link down in the description below. It's an affiliate link, but doesn't cost you anything extra. It has over 2000 drum patterns and presets. And here's one of my favorite features we're gonna be jumping into. You can easily find any drum pattern. Now, a lot of plugins do that, but not all of us play these different type of percussion instruments, so you're gonna see where this pattern editor search engine really shines. And then with this virtual live room, you can position each instrument wherever you want in terms of mic space or recording space, which again, as a producer, I can really appreciate that way it fits in my mix where I intended it to be. And then lastly here, if you have one of the new control keyboards, it integrates perfectly. The color key codes are great. You can easily manipulate all the controls on your control, pun intended but it really does seamlessly integrate with the control keyboard. It's really not too hefty on the hard drive, just shy of six gigs, and feel free to pause. You can take a look at all of the instruments that they've included in this VST. And now let's go jump into Logic and do a quick walk through my favorite features. Here we are on the plugin, so I'll just introduce you to some of the aspects of this plugin. We have the randomized button up here, which we will test. I love the random button. There's an articulation filter up here at the top. Now, what that's doing is really using kind of the frequency spectrum in order to decide which instruments to cut off. Let me give you a quick example. I'll play all the instruments here and you'll see when I start lifting up that low end, it'll start cutting off those lower cajones. And vice versa. Maybe I want those higher tambourines or those higher frequency sitting instruments not to be included in there. Now, of course, we could just go into the mixer and turn down those instruments, solo, mute, those types of things, but it does give you an easy way just to say, hey, the section I have playing now, I only want this frequency range of instruments to be included. For me, it's more kind of a fail safe. Another way to play all the instruments here is to click this play button here. And then for a quick overview for yourself, a reminder of what some of the key switches do, you can click the question mark here and it'll give you a little bit of a rundown of what everything's doing. Next, we have a visual representation here of the instrument that is selected. And if you wanna know what each of those instruments are, we can see below here. And you'll see that each instrument has five of its own pattern key switches, but then it also has its own like solo key switch, which I'll show you here shortly. The impact and roll velocity here are controlled by the pitch bend wheel and the dynamic wheel. You'll see there. Now impact is pretty cool because it's controlling the impact of the percussion instruments. And then lastly, we have the humanize, swing, and shift. Those work like any other of those controls work in any other plugin. So if you want a little bit more kind of human air and not make it so exact and robotic, you want to increase that humanize. And then for the swing, if, if you want it to have a little bit more swing group, you're going to increase the swing. I'll show you an example. Now let's dive a little closer on the patterns. Like I said, each instrument has its own five set patterns, which you can manipulate, and I'll show you that. And then it also has a solo key switch. So five separate patterns, and then you'll see down here, 
we have the purple key switches. So those all apply as well to the cajon. So each of those are its own solo hit. So maybe I don't like the exact pattern or I wanna do something a little different. I can play those different impact sounds separately. And each instrument is designed that way. But let's say that I don't really like that pattern. So now let's step into the pattern editor. So let's go over to the editor. So here we are on the step editor. Here we have each one shot, which is associated here. I can control the length of the loop. Moving down here, you can see that we are manipulating the C1 pattern. And then here are some patterns that I can scroll through that are similar to the pattern that's selected. That is gonna be huge, you're gonna see here in a second. Like any other step editor, I can select and start making my own pattern here. Now, let's say that in my head, that's similar to what I want, but I am not a professional cajon player. I don't know if that's an actual pattern for, I guess, authenticity. So now that I've edited that in here, what it has done down here, almost like a search engine, is giving me actual patterns and grooves that I can go select that make it a little bit more authentic. Okay, I like that one. So I'm gonna drag it down to C1, and now that is the pattern that it's up here, and I can manipulate that further if I want. I can get into the velocities of each hit, I can start messing with the timing, and then I could add in some flams. If you don't know what a flam is, don't be afraid. I didn't know either till I got the plugin. You'll blatantly hear it. Here's the pattern without. Now listen. There you go, you know what a flam is now. So we have this pattern set to C1. I can easily go record that now. Okay, now let's move over to the tambourine. So I'll select that key switch and see the pattern that's playing on C3. Okay, now an easy thing that I can do here is I can drag the pattern from C1 over to C3, here's that exact pattern. Here they are, both played together. Now, I don't have to be a professional tambourine player to know that I shouldn't be playing the exact same thing, right? But now that I have that groove in there, what I can do is I can again go down here and select some actual tambourine patterns that will match that groove that I've input into there. Let's say that's the one we like. Let's move that one down to C3 and hear how they sound together. Yep, we're gonna be recording that. Now I want a shaker. So let's go find our shakers. Gives us some different playing techniques, hands, sticks. Okay, apparently only hands for the shakers. That's what I want there. Guess what we're gonna do now. Let's get it a little closer to the tambourine pattern. So I'm gonna take the C3, drag it over to C5. Okay, that's not very shakery, if you will. So let's go see what other patterns we have down here that are similar to this. It 
See, and this is the perfect example. Now the tambourine doesn't really have that shake back kind of pattern built into it. Here was the tambourine pattern brought over versus here are those shake backs. And let's just use this one. Now hopefully that gives you a good idea of how easy it is to come up with a pattern or a groove, not to mention there are plenty of presets that we'll look at a few here shortly. But now let's switch over to the mixer. Let me show you a few things here. The things I really wanna focus on is we can control the width or the spread of each instrument and the placement. This is so huge. For instance, let's manipulate the cajon. I like it there in the front, a lot more presence and you can really hear that bass. And again, we can do the same for each of these. So I can make this as huge as I want, as simple, as advanced as I want. You know me, I like to keep it simple, smooth. So pushing back here again, we have our randomize. And then there are plenty of presets in here. Let's push over to some pop. I'll focus on hands. Like I had mentioned, I actually canceled my paid subscription to Splice because really the only reason, or a majority of the reason I was using Splice was for what I call tops. I have my main kick, my, name, my main snare, like really my main groove usually built, but then I just need a little extra percussion or I don't know, extra hi-hat or just something in the background to just help the overall groove. So with this, I can come up with the groove or input the groove in the step editor and have a professional percussionist play those grooves and it just sounds so much better, so much more authentic and it's so much better than me grabbing a four or eight bar loop from Splice, putting it in there and just trying to make it fit and adding different types of fills. So listen to this main groove with and without the percussionist in there. Okay, so you get the feel of it, right? I'm sending a certain message or certain groove with that, but then listen when I add the percussionist in here. Listen to the full scheme of things. I think you would agree that having that percussion in there just really helps just make it a little more full. Now be mindful, I haven't mixed or mastered this at all, but even just adding that little bit of percussion really makes it sound a lot better, I think. Let me know in the comments below if you think the same or if I'm just blowing smoke, I guess. And now if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know that if I show you a plugin, I'm gonna show you a way that I actually used it as well as if I'm gonna show you some type of production, if you're interested in the sound that I use or something along those lines, I'm gonna show it to you because I wanna help you out as much as I possibly can. So I will show you each of the presets or instruments I've used for this production. And then of course, I will show you this beat that I came up with using percussion as kind of my top and filler in there. So the first thing I did is I created this ARP with this pretty cool sound I found in Cloud Supply.
and then I sprinkled in a little glaze. And then the first time I introduced Session Percussionist was with this snap sound. And then just those three things gave the intro to this mini production. In this little intro portion, I did introduce the snare, and for the main kick and the snare, I used Butch Fig. Immediately in that next section is when I introduced the kick. And then I brought in the session percussionist again, a cajon, this sub bass D, to help bring out the low end downbeats of the kick. Listen how it helped it out. The main low end was Analog Dreams. And then helping to support it was the all synth from Anna 2. And then the rest of the session percussionist area was this preset organic clock. And then the last sound finish in this section is from RK 2.0 called Cloudburst. Put it all together, that section sounds a little like this. Now this last section, I wanted to change it up a little bit. So I took away that main ARP and then I brought in some analog strings. It needed a little bit of help on the high end, so I brought in some orchestral essentials, which is another plugin I think everybody should check in. It is one of my favorite string libraries. Then here they are together. And that's really the only thing that changed on this other section. So I hope that walkthrough helped you see why I was so excited to see and receive this plugin. So thank you Native Instruments for sending it over. And if you wanna check it out for yourself, I'll leave a link down in the description below. It is an affiliate link, but it doesn't cost you anything. Now let's go check out the full production, but as usual, I'm Phil, keep creating music.